Welcome to worship this morning at Salemsburg. If you're uh, a visitor and uh, have questions about our service or anything, feel free to talk to us. And we are certainly, certainly happy that you are here to worship with us this morning on a somewhat icy uh, sidewalk day. I think the roads are not so bad, but the sidewalks have been a little challenging this morning. So, but Rex was here and, and got salt out on him, and we appreciate that so, so much. So let us center ourselves for worship. I would invite you to stand as you're able for our opening hymn, which is number 413, Holy, Holy, Holy.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Most holy God, the earth is filled with your glory. And before you, angels and saints stand in awe. Enlarge our vision to see your power at work in the world. And by your grace, make us heralds of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The community may be seated. The first reading comes from Isaiah 6, verses 1 to 8, 9 to 13. A reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The, the pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. And he said, Go and say to this people, Keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull and stop their ears and stop their ears and shut their eyes so that they may not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and comprehend with their minds and turn and be healed. Then I said, how long, O Lord? And he said, until the cities lie waste without inhabitant and houses without people and the land is utterly desolate. Until the Lord sends everyone far away and vast is the emptiness in the midst of the land. Even if a tenth part remaineth in it, it will be burned again, like the terebinth or an oak whose stump remains standing. When it is felled, the holy seed is its stump. The word of the Lord. Be we'll read responsively Psalm 138. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. When 
I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 to 13. A reading from Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, though which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I, what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised in the third day accordance with the scriptures. And that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I work harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Luke, the fifth chapter. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Genesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats that were at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered him, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, go, go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of the fish that they had taken. And so, and so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. And when they heard, and when they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and they followed him. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, Christ. Invite the children to come down for children's time. I 
think it's awfully cold and icy, and maybe some of our friends decided to sleep in. What do you think? Hmm? Oh, here comes someone. <laughs> Pastor Bill just read one of my favorite stories. I write them all the time. It also was one of the stories when I was younger that I just never really could understand. What in the world, time here, what in the world does it mean to fish for people? Any ideas? It means to find the people to follow God. There you go. She's right. She said it man means that it that um, we are to go out and find people who believe in God. And I think that's true. And I also think that's one of the hardest things to do sometimes. It's hard to sometimes show people, I'm a Christian. I may do things, I, may, I sin and I do things wrong, but I know that I'm always forgiven when I do wrong things. A few weeks ago, I think you knew that I had fallen and I broke my arm. And I broke it pretty bad. In fact, my doctor said I had to have surgery on it. Well, that didn't sound like such a fun time for me, but I said, okay, because I trusted him. But what was, he explained what he was going to do and showed me on the x-rays and showed me what all was wrong in there. And when I came for, this, for the surgery, he came into the waiting area where I was waiting to go back, and he did the most amazing thing. He told me what he was going to do again. He put his initial on my arm to remember that, the, hey, this is the arm I'm supposed to be doing, because he didn't want to cut into the other arm and go, whoops, wrong arm. But the most amazing thing he did before he went off to scrub up and get ready for my surgery. He said, would you pray with me? Oh, what? My doctor said that. Would you pray with me? And all of a sudden, I wasn't nervous at all anymore. I wasn't worried. And I said, of course. And he prayed that God would give him the skill and the ability to do what was best for my arm and for me to heal quickly and have little pain. And that just amazed me. So do you think he was being a fisherman? Yes. Absolutely, wasn't he? He was showing me that he believed in God. And he knew that we should all follow him. Pretty neat, isn't it? Made me feel a lot better. And he, boy, is he a good guy. Yep. And that's how easy it was for him. And it can be that easy for us, too. We can tell our friends, can't we? Yeah. Let's fold our hands and play, pray, please. Heavenly Father, Jesus has told us to go fish for people. We will go and tell others about Jesus and trusting him to bring them into the boat and into our lives. Amen. Thank you, Debbie. I think some of you may know this and some of you may not know it, but my, um, my brother is a retired uh, fish and games person, a game warden. So I love this story. And he went to this, the church at Burdick where I was preaching 
And so when this gospel would come around, I would share it. Every time we had that gospel come around. And so I'm going to share that story with you today. You may have heard about this, the story about the fisherman who had a fantastic reputation for his ability to catch fish. Well, every day he would go out into his boat and he would bring back an incredibly large number of fish. And his reputation spread far and wide. One day a stranger came to the camp and wanted to go fishing with him. And the fisherman said, well, come back tomorrow about 4.30 a.m. and we'll go. The stranger was back the next morning and the two men got into the boat. The stranger was puzzled at what he saw. All that fisherman carried was an old, rusty, green tackle box and a dip net. There were no fishing poles, no casting rods and reels, none of the paraphernalia that's normally associated with fishing. They motored across the lake and got back into a little secluded cove. The fisherman opened his rusty tackle box and pulled out a red stick of dynamite. He took a match, lit the fuse, fuse, tossed the stick over his shoulder. Very calmly, the fisherman began dipping into the water and putting fish in the boat with a dip net like you've never seen. The stranger reached into his pocket, pulled out a very worn leather billfold, opened it up to reveal a shiny metal badge. He was a game warden. You're under arrest, he said. It's against the law to dynamite for fish. Again, very calmly, the fisherman reached down into that old rusty green tackle box pulled out a second stick of dynamite, struck a match, lit the fuse, handed the stick of dynamite to the game warden. The game warden was so confused, he took it, the fuse was burning in his hand, and the fisherman, with a gleam in his eye, said, are you gonna fish or just sit there? <laughs> Our scripture lesson today is about fishermen. It's a familiar story of Jesus' call of four disciples, all fishermen. We focus today on the call of the first four disciples because there is a challenging lesson in here for us. Have you ever heard the phrase, are you going to fish? or just cut the bait. Meaning, are you going to spend your time getting ready, or are you going to get on with the task at hand? For it may mean the time has come that we don't dilly-dally around anymore. We have to act now, or there will be no chance for action. Fish, or cut the bait, expresses a kind of urgency. It means a great opportunity, so, so let us look at our scripture with the image of the backdrop in our thinking. The first simple fact is that these men were fishermen. These were the first followers, and they were simple folk. They did not come from schools and colleges. They were neither learned or wealthy. They were fishermen. That is to say, they were ordinary people. No one, I mean no one, ever believed in ordinary people more than Jesus. Abraham Lincoln must have taken his cue from Jesus when he said, God must love common people. He made so many of them. It was as if Jesus might have said, give me 12 ordinary men, and with them they will give themselves to me, and they will change the world. 
So when we think about who Jesus is calling, look around you. I'm going to share with you my, um, my own call story. You know that I was in healthcare administration the majority of my life. When I turned 40, and you know, people think people just whack out when they turn 40. It's that change of life stuff, right? So you get kind of weird. Well, when I turned 40, maybe a couple months into it, in the middle of the night, I heard a voice speaking to me. And it said, I want you. And that does make you think you're kind of losing it, especially me. I said, excuse me, God, wrong house, wrong person, try next door. I thought this is the first mistake he's ever made. Well, guess what? My life began to change. So I took my family and we went to visit the seminary. I had a daughter that was going into um, high school. Sarah, our other daughter, Emily, was going into middle school. Well, they really thought their dad had flipped. You know, they don't think you're too bright already <laughs> at that age. And then they really think. So they were less than pleased to be at that seminary. They didn't see anything about it that looked appealing to them. So they made a plan that they'd go live with their grandma and grandpa. And if I wanted to go off and take Judy and go to seminary, that would be fine with them. They just weren't going to be a part of it. So, you know, you think about kids at that age. You don't want to lose your kids. You don't want them to, you know, do something that's really going to traumatize them. And they spend the next few years waiting to go on Dr. Phil and spill their guts about what you did to them. <laughs> So I chose not to go, and I prayed. I said, God, just understand, you know. And then Judy and I went to become parish ministry associates when the girls left home. So we are, you know, the plan kept coming. God kept nagging. God would put people in my life, tell me, Phil, you really need to, really need to think about the ministry. And I was like shaking my head, you know, and, and all of this. And so then we, um, we became parish ministry associates. I, I was a, able to serve some churches like an interim as a PMA, like I'm spending time with you. And that furthered that sense of call. And, and people, again, would reaffirm, Phil, you really need to answer the call. Well, I was still pretty resistant. And then we had kind of a, a tough time in our own home church. And the team program, which is what I would went through, uh, Theological Education for Emerging Ministries had just come into the church, so it was for people over 40. Well, by this time, I really overqualified for that. <laughs> and um, that had a keen interest in ministry, felt a sense of call, and would serve in specialized ministries, inner city, rural, um, African American, Hispanic where that was hard to find pastors to come to. So I started seminary. Can you imagine? And it was a challenge. But it was certainly, you know, affirming that God was with me in that, along with a wife that was hugely a, a big supporter, was an education person, had taught education for uh, special ed for 34 years, remembered things like footnotes on papers, and stuff that I had just sort of put out of my mind once I got through college. You know, you just don't want to deal with that stuff. But you do have to deal with it. So Judy was hugely supportive with me in that. And then, um, and then I was ordained in 2008. And my mom was able to be at my ordination. She died um, the next year. But she really shook her head. It was like, Billy? I was back to Billy for a while. <laughs> and, 
And a lot of other people, I think, will thought, well, really, Bill? You know, he's just a not-so-good guy sometimes and doesn't always handle things well. And, you know, God saw something in me. God sees something in all of us. Our ministry not, might not be doing what I'm doing right now. But every one of you have a ministry to do. So, you know, I was at Thomas Shinga on Friday night. And most of Saturday. We had a really good time. I had a good time. I woke up in the night, I was really cold. So this is a tough part of ministry. You're at Camp Tomashinga, you're in a camp, and you're really cold. And you don't want to move from that warm, one warm spot you have, because you know if it wakes you up or you have to get up, you're going to have an anxiety attack. So you lay there and just fixate on that. And so finally I convinced myself, okay, Bill, how many times have you laid here in the summer and complained about the heat? So I said, God put some of that heat just in my head anyway, you know. But we had the most incredible time. And talk about the Holy Spirit working. It was working right there. They talked about their journey. The kids got in a big circle, talked about their journey. The theme this year is be bold and be strong. And what they did was have the kids sit in the circle, think about what their gifts were. Ten of them. You know, that's hard to do. I could put five down quick, and then the rest was like, oh, that's boastful. That's, you know, that's not a gift. That's just, you know, whatever. But the kids came up with them pretty quickly. And the bold is, the first letter in this B word, begin. Recognize your gift. So that's what they were doing. They had some great ideas when we went around the circle. The next one was own it. That's what we sometimes don't do, people. We don't own our gifts. We just kind of ignore them. Or we try to, it's, it might cause us to do a little bit more work or do a little more something. But we need to own our gifts. The third one was to learn about them. What's it going to take to do those gifts and to do better in the world? And the last one was do it. Just figure out how you're going to do it. And then allow yourself to do it. Well, that's what our gospel lesson is about today, isn't it? It's about Jesus going to regular people, calling them. And they left their nets and left everything and followed him. All of us have those gifts. And I think most of us, as busy as we are in our lives, have time to share those gifts. So we need to own them and take them and be a part of that because it's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. I would invite you to stand as you're able for the singing of our hymn of the day, 817, one of my favorite songs, You Have Come Down to the Lake Shore.
I was just out having a great celebration with all of you. Thanks for letting me be here. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United as one body in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. We pray for the church. Give us courage to answer your call and to keep us faithful to your life-giving word. Send us out to be good news of your love for all people. Lord, in your mercy. For the earth, for tundra and forests, grasslands and deserts, for those who fish and those who farm, for ranchers, gardeners, and all whose work brings food to our tables. Lord, in your mercy. For the nations, grant wisdom to those in authority, strengthen peacekeepers, ambassadors, military personnel, and disaster relief workers. Protect families who have to leave their homes because of war, natural disaster, or rejection by their communities. Lord, in your mercy. For those in need, for those whose lives are in turmoil, for those who wrestle with addiction, for those burdened by anxiety and self-doubt, for those who grieve and those who are ill, Lord, in your mercy. For this assembly, for those who prepare the space for worship and those who mentor others in their faith, for those who nurture fellowship within this congregation and those who reach out in the service to our community, Lord, in your mercy. With thanksgiving, we remember those who have died and now rest in your presence. Sustain us in hope of the resurrection and bring us into the joy of an ending life in you. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayers and fill us with the radiance of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share God's peace with one another. Hello. Watch what I say. Please give us a wave.
Good morning, everybody. Uh, the quartet is really excited about this song we're going to sing today. Uh, it's one you just can't sit still on. It's actually an old hymn written in 1937. And no, guys, I wasn't born then. <laughs> but uh, it talks about how glorious it's going to be in heaven when we get there. You know, that's exciting as believers. You know, we have something to look forward to like that. The title of the song is Heavenly Parade. Traveling days will soon be over here and we shall cross the rolling tide. For we're down here for just a little while, our home is on the other side. And the passage is true for Jesus our Redeemer and is a love's crusade. For riding is strong and still we're going wrong in heaven with the saints parade. For heaven's king, we gladly sing the story.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Gathered together as one in the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread of life, and whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. The table is set. Come and be fed. All are welcome at our table. The Lamb of God today is found on page 154 of the liturgy. So.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>
I don't know about you, but that music jazzed me up today in that quartet. So I am really ready to go out and catch people and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.